go. Hello everyone. So today I'm going to be demonstrating how to create your own VPN. Um, I know there's a lot of VPN softwares out there that are like NordVPN or ExpressVPN that you do have to pay for. But I'm going to be demonstrating how you can get your own VPN service for absolutely free as long as you have the capabilities to host it on your own local machine. So for starters, what we're going to do is we're actually going to download an, a software to your computer. So the software you're going to download is OpenVPN Connect Download. Just go ahead and search that in the Google search bar. You're going to click on this first link right here that's um, to openvpn.net okay so once you're here you're going to just scroll down and click right here where it says download openvpn connect version 3 um, you're gonna go ahead and download this right here once downloaded you're gonna go ahead and see it pop up on your desktop right here it's also going to be available down here in your queue so you'll see openvpn connect disconnected right here okay so once you open openvpn right here you're gonna be prompted with this you can either um, put in a URL right here to connect to a VPN or you can connect a, a .ovpn file right here. So the whole purpose of this video is I'm going to actually be showing you how to get your own .ovpn file on your local server or your local hardware. I'm going to be showing you how to do that now. Okay, so once you are loaded up right here, we're going to go ahead and do this through Proxmox. I have Proxmox version 7.1-7 .7, as you can see up here. Um, the first thing I'm going to want to do is I'm going to want to go ahead and go to your local file system. You're going to go to your local file system, go to CT templates, and then you're going to want to go to templates and you're going to want to download a specific template. You're going to want to download the Ubuntu 18.04 standard edition right here. You're going to want to download this one onto your templates. Once that's downloaded, you can click up here on Create CT. So now you can go ahead and give it whichever name you prefer. For this one, I'm going to go ahead and name it VPN. You're going to come over here and you're going to set a password. Okay, once the password is set, you're going to go over to Template. You're going to go ahead and pick your template, which is the 18.04. Uh, disk size is fine. You can leave it as it is by default. CPU is fine by default and memory is fine at 512. So once you get to the network, you can either choose to set you a static IPv4 address or you can just do DHCP. Um, for the purpose of this demonstration, I'm going to go ahead and use DHCP. Under DNS settings, just to verify and to make sure that you're going to be able to obtain the downloads and the updates um, within your virtual machine, you're going to want to set the DNS settings to Google's. So Google's DNS is 8.8.8.8 .8 and then 8.8.4.4. .4. Go ahead and press next. So once you get to the screen, make sure you do not check this box right here that says start after created because you're actually going to want to put in some commands right after this so you don't want the container to spin up as soon as it's done. So just leave that unchecked and go ahead and click finish. Now we're going to let this go ahead and create so just go ahead and press the X. So once you've closed out of there, now you can go over here to where it says Proxmox. You can click on Proxmox, or for most people, by default, it should say PVE. Um, I do have mine set to say Proxmox or whatever your node is. Um, just go over to your node and then click on Shell. Once you're in Shell, you're going to go ahead and put in this first command. So the first command is... It's going to be CD... ET, forward slash etc forward slash pve forward slash lxc press enter right here you can do an ls and this is just to list the current containers you have so you can see 101 is the container we just created so from here what you're actually going to want to do is you're going to want to do nano and then do the container number and then press tab and then press enter once you're into nano, you're going to scroll all the way down to the very bottom. And you're going to go ahead and input these two lines of code. Both of these lines I will have in the description of the video below. So just go ahead and look out for those. Once you have those inputted, you're just going to hit Control X. 
Y to save and then press enter. Okay. Now once you're here, you're going to go ahead and run this next command. And again, this will be in the description of the video. So once you have run this chown command, just to verify that it did work, you're going to go ahead and run this next command right here, which is ls space dash l space forward slash dev forward slash net and forward slash ton. Once you press enter, you should see an output that looks exactly like this. Um, the date, you don't have to worry about that because depending on the time that you do this exact step, this date will be different. But as long as these beginning parts right here are the exact same of the output. Once you've done this, um, you're good to go. Go ahead and click over here under your container. Once you click on your container, you can click on console. And then go ahead and start up your container. <clears throat> okay, so once your container is started up, you're just going to enter root as the login. Your password is going to be the password that you created during setup. Okay. And now the first step that you're going to do inside of the container is you're actually going to want to run an update and an upgrade. So the command for this is apt update and upgrade. So you can see here there's an apt update and and apt upgrade dash y. The dash y just auto prompts it to say yes to pretty much all updates. Okay, so once your system is completely up to date, um, you can just double check and triple check. It's pretty simple. All you got to do is just run the command one more time. By running the command one more time, you just press enter and you can see here that right now it's reading all packages and it says all packages are up to date. So that's exactly what we want to see. So now once you get this message after updating, now we can move on to the next step. So the next step in the process is going to be putting in this command. So now the command you're going to put in is right here. You're going to put in a... Okay, so the next command you're going to put in is apt install openvpn space git. So what this is going to do is it's going to install openvpn and git. And you can see here that I did not put the dash y, so it is now prompting me saying do you want to continue, yes or no. So we're just going to go ahead and press yes. Now we're going to go ahead and let this install OpenVPN as well as install Git. Alrighty, so now once that is completed, now you're going to go ahead and run this next line, which is the Git clone line. Once you go ahead and copy that and just paste this in, Alrighty, once that's done, go on to the next line, which is OpenVPN install. So now we're going to be just traveling to the directory. Okay, so now we are under the directory of OpenVPN install. Now we're going to just run the bash script. So now this exact script that I'm about to run it can be run every single time that you want to create a new client for your VPN. So right now in this exact instance, we're going to be doing our very first client. But note that after this first client creation, if you want additional clients, just run this bash script again and again, as many times and as many clients as you need to access your VPN service. Okay. So now we get welcome to this first prompt which asks me to verify that this is my uh, public IPv4 address. So we're going to go ahead and press enter. Right here it is prompting me to use um, which protocol UDP or TCP. We're going to go ahead and put 1 for UDP. Press enter. Now what port do you want to use uh, for OpenVPN to listen to? Now, port 1194 is the default, but I will let you know that most and pretty much majority of ISPs, they do block port 1194. 
Um, this is only due to the fact that, that most ISPs do not want you to use a VPN, so most of them do block this port. So for me, I'm going to use my own specific port that I want to use that is completely different from 1194. And then you get prompted to select your DNS server. Um, for this one, we're just going to go ahead and go with Cloudflares, which is 1.1.1.1. So we're going to input 3, press enter. And then we're going to go ahead and enter a name for our first client. So we're just going to put laptop for this one. And now we just press any key to continue. So now once you get to this part, it does say finished. Um, the client has been created. So you can see here the client configuration is available in root. So new clients can be added by running the script again. So what you want to do from this prompt, it's really simple to get back to root. Really all you want to do is just do a CD and press enter. Now from here you can do an LS. Right there you can see OpenVPN install and then you can also see laptop.ovpn. So <clears throat> this is actually the client that we just created. So, in order to actually access this client, this is pretty much the very most important part that you're going to have to do. So, what you're going to have to do is you're going to have to actually do cat, and then the name of the client, and then press enter. So, you're going to scroll up, and you're going to see right here where we left off, or I inputted cat right here, starting at the very first line, which says client you're going to just highlight from here all the way down all the way right before the new line and go ahead and copy all of this go ahead and open up a new text document or a new notepad go ahead and paste this into the notepad then you're going to do a file save as and we're going to go ahead and put this into my documents we're going to make a we're going to go ahead and actually put this into the VPN folder. Under VPN now, you're going to just go ahead and put save as all files. And we're going to go ahead and name this laptop. And you're going to put dot OVPN. And then go ahead and press save. Go ahead and close out of the text box. Now we're going to go ahead and minimize everything and we are going to go ahead and open the OpenVPN Connect. Once here, you're going to click on Browse, and then you're going to travel over to that file that you created. Go ahead and load up that file in. Now the profile name, we will just change this to Laptop. Server host name, you can leave it alone. This is pretty much your public IP. Go ahead and press Connect. Now once you've gotten here and you have your profile all set up, before you connect it, there is one more crucial point to get at to actually access this VPN, and that is to actually go into port forwarding. So port forwarding is going to be different for everyone and everyone's router. I can't really do an exact explanation on how you would port forward your router. But what I can tell you is basically you're just going to go to the internet and you're going to put into your Google search bar, you're going to put in your gateway of your router. Once you have your router's gateway inputted, you will be um, opened up with your um, router login screen. So you're going to want to just go ahead and log into your router's credentials. Now once you're in, uh, for me and my purpose, um, it's actually going to be under this firewall tab up here. So you're going to go to firewall and then virtual servers. Usually it'll be under like virtual servers or like port triggers or even port forwarding. Um, just whatever really says port forwarding. Once you're under here, you're going to go ahead and set it up. So to find the actual IP address, if you were like me and went ahead and used DHCP, what you're going to want to do, let me go ahead and clear this. Once um, you are in the server, all you have to do is really just type in IP address. And once under the IP address, you can see the IP of the server right here. So this is the actual IP address of the server that you're going to use to port forward. 
So input this IP address along with the port you specified and you're good to go from there. Alrighty, so now that you have port forwarded your router, now you can simply just toggle on your VPN. Okay, and now you can see here that I am successfully connected to my VPN. So it has actually assigned me a private IP right here. And this is also the server and public IP address down here, along with the port number and all this very crucial information. So, but you can see right here, your private IP is now showing at 10802. So now, just to show you the main purpose of why you would want to do this, I'm gonna go ahead and turn this off. And as you can see here, I am currently connected to my home Wi-Fi. Okay, so my cell phone has popped up right here. I'm gonna go ahead and connect to my cell phone. So now my cell phone is connected. And I will show you here that if I am on a simple Google tab on my local hotspot, as you can see here, I'm on my iPhone. Now, if I go to my Proxmox server, my Proxmox server will not load. It will just sit here, probably have a 404 error. There you go. Site cannot be reached. So now what you're gonna do is you're gonna go and hit open VPN, toggle this on. Once this connects, now we're gonna go ahead and refresh this page. And you can see here now I am successfully connected back into my home server. So this is my home server located at my house. And as you can see by down here, I am still connected to my iPhone, but I am also at the same time running my VPN that is on my Proxmox server. So my VPN on my Proxmox server is allowing me to access everything on my home network, even if I'm not at home. So. Um, I'd just like to thank everybody for watching my video. Just remember, like, comment, and subscribe. Have a great day.